I'm no different than any other Japanese American person here in Los Angeles. Work as an artist, run errands, and I pay my bills, just like everyone else. But sometimes, when the day is done and the opportunity arises, I open my secret little restaurant. It's there I discover who I truly am, one dish at a time. I call that place the Shokudo. I'm Michael, so we're here. We're at. Where are we? We're at uh, Tokyo Central slash Marukai. They kind of merged, right? That's right. what I've heard. Slash almost Don Quixote. I was gonna say, it's not Don Quixote. Yeah, that stupid <laughs> penguin uh, is there. Um, what's, the, what's the key component that we need? If we forget it, then we're not gonna make ozoni. Dashi and mochi are the two main things. Dashi and mochi, okay. Fugetsudo! Oh, that's it. Oh, we gotta grab it. It's the last one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we can just get the powdered soup stuff. It's gonna be in the naga, naga, whatever this is, naga tanian. Oh, this one. Yes, this one. Okay. Can also be used to season pasta. Oh, we should make ozoni pasta. That's dumb. It's okay. No, that's not. In a pinch. Okay. You can use this as a soup base for. Rosani. So we got this and mochi, okay. Yeah. Primary ingredients. Nice, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the owner of uh of Fugetsu goes, you bastard. <laughs> How dare you not use good dashi? I've never cooked with Mizuna before. I can get the carrots and then cut it up and make it like look pretty. Or if green onion if people put green onions, I could slice up green onions. You know, I've never seen green onions in Ozoni. Ozoni? Really? I, I, that's how un-Japanese American I am with this. I, I'm thinking of miso soup. It's do not also, a miso soup. Do you also put tofu and then there's... Uh... <laughs> Make sure we get that on camera. This is not miso soup. All right, it's not miso soup. Ooh, 625 for one chicken breast. Do they have one that's not free range so you can get it cheaper? You want a cage chicken? <laughs> you can edit that out if you want. You don't have to put that in, but that's fine. Hamaboko! Is there a specific kamaboko we have to use um, or is typically used? I mean, the only one that I've ever used is this, the red and white one. Yeah. All right, let's get the Yamato one. Okay. This guy. Hi there. How are you guys doing? Oh, doing good, doing good. How are you doing? All right. Oh, love it. It's like that lady distracted the security guard from us. <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> Can you hold this? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. That would have been really embarrassing. That would have, it just exploded. <laughs> yeah. I don't like where this characterization of Michael and John is going. Where what? Michael is the guy who's got everything together and John <laughs> is the guy who drops stuff. Uh, I think it's pretty accurate. Ah, man. That's what it's going to be. What would happen if you didn't have this? I don't think we know what to do with ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just so so ingrained in our in ourselves in our in our minds. For me, New Year's Day is our holiday. Shogatsu. Or Shogatsu is it's a way to open the new year. Yeah, I always have the rose parade on. I always think of grandma and grandpa doing that. The rose parade. That's part of our New Year's tour and the football games, the rose bowl. That's part of our uh, celebration. Over in Japan, a lot of the osechi yori food is like store bought now. They don't, they don't mm. do the, they don't put in the effort anymore. In fact, they think we're crazy that we still do it over here. Oh, yeah. like, we have, a, as a society, have moved on. What do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, when it's New Year's, like people come. It's not that many, and I'm like, this is not that many. And then they spend all day making the food. Everybody comes here, get yelled at, and do the dishes, and take out the stuff. I was getting yelled at. I'm just trying to help. That's what Ozoni <laughs> makes me think of. Shame. No, I'm just kidding. 
after our grandparents pass away, where are we going to have it? After our parents pass away, where are we going to have it? Who's going to have the biggest house? We have to make sure yeah, someone we has. About that. We have to make sure someone has a big enough house to have New Year's. I don't know for Japanese American people, or at least for me, I kind of like just being here in my house with my family, eating my ozoni. I feel like uh, we're all united by the food. This is a big old pot of dashi. And this is like a family tradition, just this dashi smell wafting through our house. You did work in a restaurant though. As a waiter. <laughs> no, I, I, I opened the ice cream mochi. I poured tea. <laughs> I also found out from my mom that I think some years she even skipped the making dashi. She just added the tsu with the dashi in it. <laughs> We're making ozoni today because uh, it's the holidays, it's New Year's, it's a tradition. Ours is a very, I'd say, simple and comforting food, uh, comforts my soul. The basis of ozoni actually starts with a good dashi, as is with most Japanese dishes. Uh, what we start with is we start with uh, like the kombu, so you, like a like a slice of seaweed. So we soak it overnight. You saw that this pot was sitting on the stove in cold water with this soaking in it. And then you add start, you add then you add these uh, fish flakes, the katsobushi. Um, and what this is, it's it's shaved uh, uh, oh skipjack. We're gonna put the katsu all in. Okay. And we just wait, don't stir it. All right, Dashi Masterclass right now. Back in 1908, this guy figured out that kombu has the highest concentration of glutamate out of any natural occurring substance in the world, which is why we use it. And the eosinic acid from the fermented fish. Dashi Together. Masterclass. Now that it's been sitting here, it's called Ichiban Dashi. We're going to strain it. All right, so did grandma do it like this in a big ass pot? Well, not as big as this because Jesus. we have a lot more people to feed than grandma used to. And what we're going to make from that is the ozoni tsuyu. Okay, that's good. That's good. Don't put any more. Yeah. So this is, look at how golden and clean and wow. beautiful this dashi looks. So this is now dashi, but you, got, you have to flavor it, right? A little bit. So what are you gonna flavor? What do you what do you use to flavor this? Historically, love. Uh, love. The classic is mirin, sake. I put salt. Uh, tsuyu is basically like a like a concentrated soup base. It's mostly like uh, shoyu, sugar, salt. I think MSG. I think it does have a little bit of dashi in it, but I just like to have more of the dashi flavor. That's why I make the dashi pre make the dashi separately. All right, let's uh, let's assemble our ozoni. Let's do it. And then you have to like cut this. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot! There goes my leaf. <laughs> well, we have a whole bunch of carrots to work with, so a wheel. And I'm ruining, <laughs> destroying all parts of the, what makes it beautiful. <laughs> Mine is not any better. All right, here you go. You need like a real Japanese house. Look at that. Can you, can you <laughs> not show this on camera? Whoa! This is... is that yours? Yeah. What the fudge? That's great. It looks fantastic. <laughs> it looks better than this. You're using a freaking. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm Butchers. At a, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage. So, my family, I mean, our day starts with Ozoni at. Used to be my grandparents' house, but now it's my parents' house. Mm. And then. And then we go and we go to my dad's cousin's place. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, our New Year's Day is just full of traveling around to different family houses and eating. And uh, actually, I end the day at uh, my uh, Auntie Jane's house. So their family, they just have a, this huge New Year's party. There's got to be like 50 to 100 people coming by. Holy crap, really? Yeah, and my Auntie Jeez. Jane, she makes food for everybody. Mm -hmm. Her doors, you know, wide open. All friends and family come by. Oh man, that's crazy. Must be like a pretty big day for you, huh? Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty big day for, for a lot of J's, really. Dang. <laughs> One of the things that has come up with both John Kawasaki and Kent mm -hmm. is that 
Ozoni for them is the dish that is for the cooks, for the hosts. It's mm. like their sustenance for getting through such a long day of celebrating and cooking. Yeah. And so actually, yeah, when I go to the Matsumoto house for New Year's, mm -hmm. I don't eat ozone there because I'm getting there at the end of the day. Oh. But I eat ozone with my family in the beginning of the day. Yeah. And I'm sure they're also eating their ozone that mm -hmm. morning as well. I forgot what the name is called, but it's like called family meal or chef's meal or something. Mm -hmm. And it's a special meal the chefs prep for the other like the sous chefs and everything mm. they have their own special off menu thing that they eat to get sustenance so that they can keep serving people yeah. so essentially ozoni is almost like that yeah exactly um, that's pretty cool chill and kick back in the morning have our ozoni soup wait for our family to arrive later in the day it's the first thing we eat for the day it's the first thing we eat for, for the new year. You know, we finished our cooking and uh, we're just getting ready for family to come. When we're eating this, we're like standing in front of the TV watching like the one or two floats that we get to watch. <laughs> it's like it's like my break time right before like the, the storm, like the eye of the storm kind of thing. <laughs> like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Oh, that's a nice float. <laughs> that's why I'm usually <laughs> I don't have to wake up early in the morning to prepare the ozoni for everyone because my grandma does it for us. And she's in her late 90s now and, and she's been doing this and I, you know, for me, I, can you imagine like your grandma in the kitchen making, you know, like 20 bowls of ozoni? Yeah. Um, but she does it for us because she knows the value that it brings for us, our souls, but also our stomachs to sustain us for that morning because she knows that we're going to clean her house. We're gonna get the food ready. We're gonna go um, and visit people, or we're gonna, you know, prepare food for people throughout the day, and we're gonna host people. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is is her understanding and her gratefulness back to us that we are going to, you know, make good on on that New Year's Day. Mm. I guess it's like a signal, like the day is, the New Year's starting, the day is happening. Get ready to go. Get ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> like all these people that you love and respect are coming and you have to show them that love and respect in return. And this relatively balanced dish is like a representation of like, we're going to start and people are going to come and you're going to work to show them you're still an important part of our life. And this is like the signal to like, okay, you're gonna put your effort into showing these people. Here we go, baby. So this is Mizuna. It's a typical Japanese uh, semi-bitter green. It's a very uh, popular uh, green for ozoni, but uh, many people also use spinach. We don't put this in the soup. I put it directly into the bowls to avoid it getting overcooked. Then I'm gonna prepare my Meyer lemon for the last aromatic that makes the soup really smell good. They call this narutomaki and it is just decorative. You could use regular kamaboko too. So this is a piece of the breast of chicken. I just make it nice and thin into a strip so that it cooks quickly and gives nice surface into the broth. The chicken helps to uh, flavor the tsuyu too. Come into a full roiling boil. Mmm, good. All right, here we go. So we're gonna um, put the stem of the Mizuna in first because that's gonna need the heat. And here it comes, get a piece of chicken. It's nice and scalding hot. Let's put in our mochi. Let's pour that soup tsuyu right on top of that mochi. Put in a naruto. Put the greens, the leafy greens. And then this is when we do our little trick with the lemon. And here we are. That's it. Want to try it? Let's try it. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. That is uh, 
That's called family right there. You know, just like the mochi, how everyone kind of makes it differently. They grill it, they boil it, mm -hmm. they toaster oven it. Yeah. Uh, everyone kind of celebrates New Year's their own way. Mm -hmm. um, and you were just talking earlier about how your family gets together. They don't necessarily make ozoni, but it's still your way of celebrating the new year, your, your form of oshogatsu. Uh, yeah, and it's weird. I mean, because when I hear that, I'm like, we should be do, doing something spectacular or something super traditional in the Japanese culture. That is in itself oshogatsu, right? It's a large part of it, mm. and and through the shokudo, you're now learning how to make these dishes. Yeah. So now you can bring them to your family, to your oshogatsu. That's true, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, and you even said that your aunties are aware of ozoni. They, mm -hmm. they ate it growing up, right? And it was just kind of no one actively taught someone how to make it. Yeah. Well, they knew of it and they knew other people were eating it, mm -hmm. but they never got taught by my grandma because my grandma, she didn't really like to cook. Mm -hmm. And what I'm understanding about that point in time was that people wanted to be Americanized. So yeah. my grandma was like, you don't need to know what ozone is because it's just a thing that we do. But your grandma made it. Uh... No, actually. Oh, she didn't make it. Yeah, she didn't make it. She saw other people make it, but mm -hmm. she herself didn't make it. She mm. would make, I don't know, American stuff. I actually don't know what my grandma made, but she didn't make ozoni. Mm. Yeah, so that's why she couldn't pass it down. I see. When did you start making the dashi, Mom? That's what the people want to know. That's what I want to know. When did Grandma say, all right, you're allowed to do this? Uh, when Grandma got too tired to make it. <laughs> Was it important to your mom that you learn how to do it? I mean, I get, no. No, my mom wants to make everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a Japanese kind of thing. They don't write recipes, right? So grandma never wrote this down for me and said, okay, two teaspoons of that and five cups of this. I just watched her do it. And then I read some books, but yeah. You um, think your uh, ozoni tastes better than grandma's? I don't know. Uh, no, it's I It's all right. She doesn't that. watch YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so my 91-year-old mother is still alive. Over the years, my four siblings and I, we all try to pick for brain for recipes. So there was an example, was that two years, three years ago, when she did this uh, caramel corn recipe. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I remember asking her, hey, you know, she tells me, oh, I'm not going to make it this year. And everyone goes, oh, what? Well, give us the recipe. We'll, we'll take over. So she says, okay. So she hands me a piece of paper one day with this recipe on there. And I said, really, this is your recipe? She goes, no, you just asked me for caramel corn. I'm not going to give you my recipe. <laughs> it was a conscious thing from my mother in some small way because she said, well, you should learn how to do this because she was the one, of course, who did the bulk of the cooking because my grandmothers had passed away earlier. And then it turned out she passed away earlier. So then the bulk came to me and my sister. How does it make you feel to, to see John not only just take on a lot, but more than you expected initially? It's great. It's the best. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, for you. For me. See? It's the best. Over the years, we've done so many different things. Um, but then our, our group has gotten smaller. So we can't cook as many things. So we kind of have to prioritize. With the lists, we kind of portion out, okay, this person does this, this, this dish, and then uh, this person does that dish, and that goes under each person's name. Uh, so it'd be uh, my mom, my aunt, me, uh, Madi, my sister, and Dara, my brother. Uh, and we each get different things to be in charge of. Not just the day of, but the prep for it as well. If you want good flavor, goes to him. If you want things to look pretty, goes to me. me. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I guess it's, 
it's good to know that I'm doing something that I can kind of pass on, even though it's my own small part of it. Um, so it's, I think it's nice to know that I'm, I'm passing something and keeping something alive. It's not uncommon for JAs to not go through the effort of making all of the special New Year's foods. I mm. mean, we all learned it from our grandparents because who else would we learn it from? Yeah. Um, but I, I'm finding that, you know, more and more of our generation, they, they know less and less how to make these foods. And there are certain families that continue these traditions and mm -hmm. some people, they uh, invite everyone over and they have like hundreds of people come by their house on New Year's Day. Shoot. Because they, they, they make the traditional Japanese foods. Yeah. And they're the ones really taking the responsibility on themselves to to keep keep our traditions our you know very japanese traditions alive yeah 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 blanch this really quick we used to go to my my grandparents on my mother's side he has a house in manhattan beach it's really big so we hit a lot of people over. Uh, and then I think one year we hit about 100 people. Um, I just remember, and it'd be like a whole day thing. Oh no. Oh, well. Our family cooked most of the food. My immediate family and uh, my aunt and her family. Um, and then everyone else who came uh, usually kind of brought something like potluck style. Checking if the soup is okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Having fresh mochi is really nice, actually. Because <laughs> like we have one family that comes to New Year's every year, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are their New Year's tradition? <laughs> where, where are their New Year's tradition? But um, they used to go to nine different New Year's parties in one day. Tokimas. And then they came last year, and they said that ours is one of two that still do it. All the others have stopped because it's just too much effort and no one wants to continue. And it's like being able to give them a place to like continue to continue their own New Year's tradition. And like their daughter is now, how old is Jolie? 11? 10? 10, 11? And she's starting to be like, oh, like this is something like important to me. And like she's starting to realize like I want to know more about my Japanese culture and so she's starting to ask questions and because we're continuing to do it she has a place to ask these questions and to continue it on all right so we're not gonna be super fancy about it cool in a pinch this mm -hmm. is this, this will be our soup base for uh, for our ozoni today this is a cup of ozoni then. cup of ozoni okay. yes that sounds good ozoni on the go Interesting. So, we might be able to split one. Anyway. No, let's get that flavor in there, man. <laughs> Salty, all right. Yes, let's do it. I mean, these bowls are a little small, but it's all right. Okay. So, what do we do? Mochi first? Yeah, let's put the mochi in. All right. And then, um, so you're supposed to put like this, the thicker stock in. Oh, okay, okay. I thought leaves, thicker stalks, okay. No, then you put the leaves on top oh, after the water. Oh, I see, okay. Ah, I see, that's for dressing. Mm -hmm. Then after that, kamaboko. Mm -hmm. One or two? Never many. Okay, I'll just try it's two. It's casual today. Cool. Man, that looks super Japanese. I like it. <laughs> that's cool. All right, so then we just need some soup mm -hmm. and a piece of chicken. Okay, sounds good. Oh, and a good. carrot. <laughs> yeah, so let me set that up for you. Let's start with the chicken. All right. There you go. Two pieces of chicken. And a carrot. And then we'll do the, oh, I got the nice one. Oh, that's so nice. That makes it pop. That's ozoni for sure. The carrot makes it ozoni. And then soup.
Holy crap, that's ozoni. Okay, this is for you. All right. Oh, wow. Beautiful, dude. That looks good. Let's keep going. My turn. Cool. All right, and the final piece. Just a little bit of garnish. Means enough, okay. Okay. Alright. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Akemashite Akemashite omedetou gozaimasu. Mmm. Mmm. Alright. How is it, Michael? I have no um, baseline. I've never used um, the powder dashi. This one has a pretty distinct flavor. So that, that, I'm getting a lot of that. Mm. I thought it would be kind of on the bland side. It's not, it's pretty salty. Yeah, it is pretty salty. But That's why I was like, oh, should we split it? Because we're using small bowls. Mm. <laughs> More, I like it though. Yeah. In like, a pinch, it works. Mm -hmm. It's also not, you know, New Year's, so it doesn't feel like lasagna. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's a big factor in it. Mm -hmm. mm. Mochi can also be to hold or to have. I think that that's why it brings luck is because you're assured of having things for the following New Year. That, you know, yeah, you won't go hungry kind of thing. That's what I thought the mochi came from. Yeah. We were kind of just Google searching the meanings of different ingredients. Yeah, I mean, some things like, like like oh, it's like this shape, so like like the shrimp or something like that. It's like curved shape. It means something. The mochi is stretchy, and you know things mean things. And when you eat the mochi, kind of it's kind of long when you when you chew through it. Maybe that stretchiness means longevity mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were right. The mochi represents longevity. It's <laughs> and then uh, yeah, that's what that's what the internet says. I don't, is that true, Kent? Yeah, yeah. The the longer the stretch, the, or the, the 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 stretch of it, mm -hmm. like, it's like like a cheese pull, right? So. Mm -hmm. oh. Represents the longevity of, of life, you know. I'll try. Let me see. Ah. I guess I'm dying young. <laughs> <laughs> well, 40 it is. That's a YouTube screenshot right there. Let's get it on the side so that we have the mochi. As oh, like, as a thing. We don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> shat on the culture. Yeah, so like. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> So before we begin, I just want to say thank you to uh, Auntie Sharon. She is the one who helped prepare all of these ingredients. It takes a long time to prepare and to prep all of these things. So I really appreciate it. Thank you again for helping us out. Yeah, thanks. I can't wait to get into it. This is probably one of your first times having it, right? Yes, yeah. this is the first time. So the spread we have in front of us, it's really hearty. Mm. And I think for a lot of other Japanese Americans out there, you're probably looking at this and saying, this is a lot of stuff. But uh, for, for my family, I think we're really similar to the Uedas. We do kind of a hearty lasagna with a lot of um, good, healthy ingredients in it. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I would also say it's kind of an Inaka country people type technique oh, <laughs> to do that too. Yeah. This I is see. like the harvest of the, of the season that you're adding this to the, the soup. All right, so let's go ahead and start plating our ozoni. So we want to plate every all the ingredients one by one, or all? yeah, we want to you know plate this with intention. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not the one that plates the ozoni at my family, but I know that they all have different significance. And as you're plating it, let's put it on the sides and let's have the mochi be the focal point of it. That sounds awesome. All right, please dig in. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Auntie Sharon, 
Good job. Yeah, you can really taste. This is this is a hearty, they hearty bowl. bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think even these bowls are beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Michael, what makes ozoni ozoni? It's kind of just a, a mochi soup that you eat on New Year's. The ingredients that are in ozoni, I mean, like everyone makes it different. Some of them have special meanings or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's not like these ingredients aren't available to us throughout the rest of the year. Like we have mochi mm -hmm. throughout the year. We have, you know, kamaboko. Uh, so I think what makes ozoni ozoni is, yeah, the, the fact that we make it at New Year's, that it's a New Year's tradition and having this same exact dish, same exact ingredients made the same way at any other time of the year, mm -hmm. it's just not the same. That's true. Yeah. I can imagine having like a Nisei make this without all of the Mizuna, Kamaboko. Mm -hmm. They probably had to use ingredients like, I don't know, like spinach mm -hmm. or whatever, or their protein. Maybe they couldn't get chickens. They use something else. I yeah. Know, spam or something. But I can imagine. Uh, I don't know about spam. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I could, I could imagine <laughs> they wouldn't have these ingredients. So it really isn't about the ingredients that makes it ozoni. Right? Yeah. So it's not the ingredients that make the ozoni. I would say that if their family gathered together, no matter what ingredients was in, if they have this clear soup, whatever the case, made their own mochi, that's ozoni, right? Yeah, so. I think that's a large part of it, yeah. Mm. To taste and see and do the things that were done over 100 years ago and continuing that into a future is a pretty strong history. We have things in the Nikkei culture that were brought over by our Issei and Nisei parents. They don't do a lot of those things in Japan. You do some semblance of ozoni. Sometimes it's just like powdered soup and you just put mochi in it. They all order out and get individual trays. They're busy ordering in October. It feels very like commercialized. And I said, don't you cook anymore? And goes, no. The idea is that you don't labor over the you know, stove in the morning or in the oh. daytime and you actually like spend that time with each other's company. I think there's something to do about bad luck in there too. You know, you don't oh. cook the day of too. Right, right. Yeah. So my mom does even like a more pared down version of that in Indiana or did. The Japanese person never saw what a JA person would do. Exactly. Yeah, they'd be like, why the heck are you cooking? Why are you working so hard on New Year's Day? Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, you know, you're the wontons that take forever to make and then fry. Yeah, but do we really need them? We already have like a shrimp that we were frying and then and then we're frying. It's like so much food and there's like less and less people at these gatherings. But Lisa and Denise and, and Madi have trouble paring it down because each item has a significance beyond just eating it in that moment. And I get that, but I don't yeah. yet. For the Nisei or Issei who have passed on already, but they would always bring one specific dish. And so we have that association with that dish at New Year's. It continues on like not just the community but like their memory or our memory of them. They continue to live on through their food that we should continue to share with other people. So in some ways New Year's is like a continuation of like all of their combined memories and all of their combined like lives and understanding of the culture. My maternal grandparents or grandma had an element of this she likes to host right and she would over make things because you know she remembers that i said when i was three that i like this you know a lot of things like that and so i see that that thread in it and i can see the commonalities between my grandparents and your family you know the, that hosting kind of spirit and the wanting to give with food and and spending time together I, but I like to think my mom was probably so isolated and so like, it was like survival mm -hmm. for her. Um, she's alone on this island called Indiana and with four children, you know, and without access to Asian markets that are, you know, affordable or close without 
real friends that speak her language, that can understand her without, right? And so many things, that connection, that community. And so then you start to chip away at the things that are non-essential. Like I am trying to on this, but then those non-essential things were actually the things that might have been essential to keep that sense of community and that sense of like belonging to something. I mean, before I didn't really think too much about about it, about yeah, right. Making you, don't, you don't think about it. Yeah, and so so to hear Luke say like, at first it was like, oh yeah, this is the cool thing that only my family does, and then mm. to slowly realize like, oh. I'm the only one that really does it. I mean, and, and us as Yonsei, like we are taking on responsibility. Like for me, like I'm turning the mochi. I am also helping cooking on New Year's Day. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, taking on responsibility because I know that that is, it's it's what I need to do. But also I know that if I'm doing something, it takes something else off my parents' plate or my grandparents' plate. Right. And so they feel happy and comfortable that the traditions are being passed on and they feel like, oh, thank goodness, like someone in our family is understanding. Is, yeah. Right, right. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for making Ozoni for me all these years. Thanks for making it for all the family. You're, uh, you're the last vestige of the old world that we have. You're like a cultural <laughs> asset we must protect. But now your knowledge has been transferred to me and I'll bring this Ozoni to the world. I, I, I'm so happy to hear you say that because that means uh, the fact that you want to cook it, you enjoy it this much, you remember it and want to transmit it makes me feel that it was worth all the years of doing this. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. There wasn't really one way to make ozoni that everybody has their own variation of what ozoni is. It wasn't like a lot of the past recipes that I learned where there was one way to do it this is how to do it like pakai for example this one was this is one variation out of a lot of families versions of what this is and I thought that was like especially interesting you know yeah we've seen how Auntie Jane makes it one way the mm -hmm. John Kawasaki and his family makes it another way even Kent mm. Luke they, everyone has their own way of doing it yeah and I think it echoes how there's not a single way to be Japanese American. There's mm. a number of ways that we can be Japanese American. And it doesn't mean you had parents who were in the parents or grandparents or family that were interned in camps. It doesn't mean only those who play basketball are Japanese American. Mm -hmm. We have our own ways of expressing our Japanese Americanness. Yeah. I think the big realization for me going through all of this is almost like a secret hidden world that was right in front of me, but I couldn't see it because this is what I was raised with, you know. I was raised with things like spam musubi or chili rice or I, I was raised with it and those things didn't seem special to me because they were just part of life. You know, those were, that's like regular food. But throughout this process of doing the Shokudo, I'm able to connect with you. I'm able to connect with a lot of people in the JA community that had the same thing. And all of a sudden, it's not just this regular thing that only I had. It's this thing that we all shared. And I think that's really special, you know. Um, the Shokudo used to be an empty place and now it's a place now filled with a bunch of people coming in and sharing their stories of what it means to be JA. Such a, it's now become such a special place, you know? Um, and, you know, I'd like to express gratefulness because without the Shokudo series and without um, 
you know, like having this team, I would have never discovered this really amazing, warm, hidden world, you know? And now I know, for me, like, Spam Musubi, you strip all of that away, and now I'm starting to see that you're, you're left with these people that are just so warm and so friendly, you know? And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that, and I'm glad to be surrounded by that, because who has that? It's more, it's more realistic that we're more further yeah. apart yeah. and yeah. closer yeah. together. Yeah. I, think. <laughs> I think we have to do this one again. <laughs> so make sure you leave in the recording. Thank you, Luke, and thank you, Michael, for doing this. Yeah, I'm not gonna be all stiff here and be like, well, my mother has prepared this beautiful pot of ozoni forts, which is, yeah, as you can see. Getting a little too far off in the Alright. You should time lapse it so Oh, jeez. I already know what our thumbnail is gonna be. <laughs> like the title of the episode would be like, You've never seen mochi like this. <laughs> Just one of those freaking clickbaity types. It's like, dang it, that one got the most views. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man, John, this has been so much fun here in the Shokudo. Mm -hmm. But where do we go from here?